So I want to speak to you today about speaking to that mountain, speaking to that issue, that problem in your life, so that you can be set free totally, hallelujah, without hindrance. And you know, friends, it's the Holy Spirit and God's Word together that will actually revolutionize your life. Praise the Lord, yes. So you cannot just read the Word and not be changed. If you are reading the Word through the Holy Spirit, there will always be a change because he said that he sends his word and he heals us. So we are assured that we will see healing and deliverance happen in our lives as we believe it, as we begin to act upon it. And as we read the word, even our behaviors begin to change, to love, to power, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. You see, if we're not reading the Word through the Holy Spirit, um, that old nature is still there. And so we need to make sure that, uh, that we are not just reading it like a novel, but actually reading it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acting upon it is where we're at today. So praise the Lord. And as we do read it, the streams of living waters begin to well up within us. Hallelujah. We can't not be changed. We are always changed through his word. Praise the Lord. And the Bible teaches in Numbers 23, 19, that God is not a man that he should lie. Praise the Lord. So we guaranteed of an answer. That is, if we come to him through repentance and through faith and trust in his word, and that we do not doubt, not one bit, hallelujah. So, yes, you know, what he says he will do, and whatever he has spoken, we know that it will come to pass. So we're not only going to be hearers, you know, deceiving ourselves, but actually one of those who will put the word into action and believe for that blessing to take place. So, praise the Lord. And as we do so, um, we certainly will see a change. Even if change is just taking a little while to come to pass. Uh, remember, God is not a man that he should lie. So we know, we believe beforehand that it will come. And I want to... Um, just really meditate on Mark 11, verses 22 to 24 today. And it's really a wonderful scripture that really brings about things to pass. Many people say it's like a blank check to the church. And it is, in a way, but there's so much more that we have to apply with these precious promises of our Lord. And, um, you know, but just releasing things as well in our lives. And Mark eleven twenty two to 23 says, have faith in God. That's the first thing it says. It doesn't say, you know, just go out there and um, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. The first thing it says is that we are to have faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. So, yes, so it says, Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. So healing is beginning to take place within our hearts. But it says, but believe what they say will happen. It will be done for you. It doesn't say it shall be done for you. It actually says that it will. Okay. And uh, that's really wonderful. So, you know, Jesus tells us in his word to speak to that sickness, that disease, that difficulty in your life, and command it to go, that financial lack. Um, whatever that limitation is, we need to speak to it and command it to go from our lives. And God will actually honor that faith if we pray by faith in his name. So if we will believe and have no doubts, we know that we will see victory 
It may not happen today. It may happen today. It may not happen next week, but it's coming. And friends, we need to trust God in the waiting as well. So it goes on to say in Mark 11, 24, it says, Therefore, I tell you, whatever, whatever, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it's yours. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful, but do we believe that? What is your heart saying today? What are you saying in your heart today? Because many are coming up with ought in their heart, and they're wondering why their prayers are not being answered, because there's hurts, there's unforgiveness, and all of these things that are holding them back from a glorious life. Why walk in that when we have a wonderful Savior who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all? So praise the Lord. And today, many people want to reason things, and, uh, and then they wonder why things don't happen, because they're trying so hard to receive their deliverance, where it's really as easy as just believing, repenting, and trusting that the Lord will come through at the right time. So, yeah, so whatever your situation is today, speak to it, speak to it. You know, perhaps even when you're at home or wherever, just begin to speak out to that problem and say, cancer, go in Jesus' name. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Command that thing in your life that is tormenting you, that is coming against your relationship with Christ, and you will see change begin to happen. Praise the Lord. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so just like Jesus did to that fig tree, you know, he, he actually commanded that fig tree to wither up and die. And you can do the same with that situation in your life, you know. Um, I remember when we first bought our house, there were lots of trees and old dead weeds and all of that, so... I began rebuking them and commanding them to shrivel up and die. And you know, they actually did. Um, so it, it's actually amazing the authority and power that we have in God's word. And uh, if you truly believe it, because then I went back the next day to have a good look. And it, yep, it sure was. Uh, withered up and died and we were able to pull out those old weeds but um, the same is true in our lives as well. You can command that hindrance, that problem to go. If you truly believe it in your heart, it will go. It has to go because God is faithful to his word. He will honor his word. Even when, <clears throat> sorry, when we remain faithless, you know, when we have no faith, he will always be faithful to his word. Okay, so that's why we need to really um, you know, make sure that our hearts are in the right place as we come up to receive from him. So, you know, when you hear the conversations of so many Christians out there today, they sadly unbelieving believers. <clears throat> it is, it's very sad. And, uh, you know, there's a question that I actually put on Facebook about two or three weeks ago, um, I was actually asking people what was on their hearts concerning receiving healing from the Lord. And I always, as a healing minister, always like to see what is on people's hearts. Um, what do they believe? What are they speaking out there? What are they speaking out there to others or even their spouses? You know, and so it was quite interesting uh, to understand that some people, they were very certain that God heals. They were like, yes, that's it, it settles it, and amen, hallelujah to that. Yet, some of them had um, actually had doubts that God would heal them, and others um, don't believe that they're actually good enough to receive from the Lord. They feel that perhaps they've had a bad past, and that there's no ways that God can use them. You know, do you remember that lady at the well 
she came up to Jesus. She had had five husbands. Do you remember that, that scripture? Do you know how the Lord used her? He, she went back to her town, and it's just amazing how the Lord used her in such a mighty way. And uh, he knew all about her. You know, he didn't want the water. He, was the, he is the living water. Hallelujah. But he's telling us, friends, that our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. If we just repent and come to him, God can use anyone. Look, he used Moses. He used Paul, you know, Saul to Paul. Look what happened there. Um, It just shows you that God is so loving and so faithful, friends. Never let anyone condemn you or speak over you and say that you are unworthy to receive of the Lord because you are. You definitely are. And God can use anyone and he'll even amaze those who spoke against you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, so, yeah, some people are doubting whether they are good enough to receive, and some are also trying to reason out why they are still sick. So, it's quite interesting to understand what is on the hearts of people when they come up for prayer. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why, you know, when we come up, we need to just lay things uh, before the throne of grace and just begin to believe him. Just have that childlike faith, you know, just that childlike faith to know that he can touch us, you know. We cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless we come as a little child. Hallelujah, friends. Hallelujah. You know, friends, God is wanting to use so many people in the body of Christ today. But the words that are coming out of their mouth and their hearts, what they're believing, what they're saying out there, friends, uh, it's, it's not good. It's not good. And we need to release those things from our hearts today. Hallelujah. Um, Praise the Lord. But you know, the devil has just so blinded people's hearts today. And uh, he's stolen the word from them, that true word that really sets them free. And uh, it really grieves me to hear what is on the hearts of people and why many can attend these services for so many years and yet some come in and they're out completely delivered and some will go around the mountain and around the mountain ever seeking never coming to the knowledge of the truth of God's word because their hearts are not for God. They appear to be for God, but their hearts deceive them. Friends, God is one. It says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us, friends. So we need to really stake our lives upon that, that God is worth, you know, he does want to use each and every one of us, but we need to lay things down. Hallelujah. And too many people are confessing doubts and uncertainties and worries and complaints and negative statements about their health and their bodies and their families and their marriages and their workplace as well. And the Bible actually tells us in Romans 14, verses 23, that everything that does not come from faith is sin. And uh, in Hebrews 3, 12, it says, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you have a sinful heart, unbelieving heart, that turns away from the living God. Okay. So the scripture speaks volumes. And, you know, another version says, Take heed, brother, if there be any of you with an evil heart of unbelief. So unbelief is sin. And this is what keeps us, um, what hinders us from receiving God's blessings. So, you know, when we speak God's word without doubt in our heart, Jesus says that we can speak to that mountain and it will be be (laughs) removed, friends. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yeah, absolutely. So God promises to heal us. 
But um, he doesn't tell us also when the healing is going to manifest. And um, he does assure us that we will recover. And sometimes as time goes by, some people begin to doubt and, um, and some even give up after a while. Some even say perhaps the prayer wasn't prayed effectively, but God is looking to your faith, you see. And uh, would you believe him for a day, a week after prayer? Would you believe him for a month or even a year after prayer? How long? How long? Or if it doesn't happen instantly, will you let the devil come straight in and say it didn't happen? You see, we live in a faithless generation that if we don't see things happen instantly, we begin to doubt God or others. But God is looking to faith. He said, Jesus says, when he comes, will he find any faith upon the earth? So we need to trust him that even if it hasn't taken place right now, that it will happen. And that is, is, is wonderful faith, believing. And I always spend a lot of time in Hebrews 11 because it just shows you Look at that. Faith pleased God, you know, and Enoch was just with him. And, uh, and there's so many other, you know, of Abraham and how long he had waited and how he just believed, friends. What is coming out of our mouths is, is really um, a statement of what is on our hearts. And uh, it's very important. So praise the Lord. Don't also base your deliverance on whether you manifest it or not. Um, that's a huge danger because it's, that's against the word as well. It doesn't say you shall receive um, your deliverance when you manifest. It says, by faith in the name of Jesus Christ, um, you were made well. So whether you manifest or not, don't base it upon that. Amen? So... There are many manifestations that do take place in this ministry. But don't be looking for, for feelings and things. Rather be looking to Jesus uh, in faith, and then you'll see your deliverance happen a lot quicker um, because you're looking straight to him. And if you come with a repentant heart, friends, you can see that deliverance will just begin to happen. And um, just remember that lady with the issue of blood, and she kept on saying within herself, you know, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. That's what she said in her heart. What are you saying in your heart today? And in Matthew 9, 21, she receives what she believed in her heart. And she demonstrates that the power of speaking uh, or thinking faith to be effective so what are you saying in your heart right now as you come up for your prayer of deliverance and healing? Um, praise the Lord, because it will be done to you as you have believed. And uh, we must also be careful not to speak negative words. Uh, Matthew 12, 36 says that we will give account for every idle word that we speak. Um, but we should also be careful what we open up our hearts to. What are you watching out there, friends? What movies are you watching out there? Are they something that glorifies Christ? Or do they have swear words in? There's so many that I've wanted to use, friends, in the body of Christ. But I know that within their hearts, they are so full of swear words, backbiting, and these things cannot, cannot really be in a ministry that flows in the grace of God. So friends, let's rid ourselves of idle words, of evil words. Hallelujah. Because anybody who speaks like that, one must question what spirit are they flowing? What spirit are they praying for people with? You know, And this is the, the whole issue with false prophets today is many are coming um, to receive from the Lord with an idle spirit, with a spirit that is not of the Lord. So friends, we need to cleanse our hearts, cleanse our hearts, because Jesus is coming, and time is running very, very short, and people are full of idle words in their hearts, 
and that needs to go. The occasional swear word is not for the kingdom of God. God will not wink. He will not wink and say, oh, that's fine, it's okay, it's lighthearted, it's fine. You are deceiving yourselves in such a terrible way, friends. Have nothing to do with fruit, unfruitful works of darkness. Have nothing to do with it. So, friends, you know, I just speak this because it's really on my heart today. Um, <clears throat> there are many that are wanting to operate through the Holy Spirit, but they clearly are operating of an idle spirit, friends, and God will not have anything to do with that. And we've seen what has taken place of people who have been operating under those spirits. So, friends, pray for them. Pray for them. There's so much coming upon the earth now. Judgment is happening, and it begins in the church of God. We need to be holy, for our God is holy. Our God will have nothing to do with, with, with useless deeds of darkness and any words that come from the kingdom of darkness, friends, have nothing to do with it. So, friends, our healing took place at the cross of Jesus Christ. And as we come up to receive from him today, we know that we have blessing from the Lord. And we know that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. And just remember, we overcome this world by faith. Hallelujah. Not by backbiting, not by speaking negative words out there, but by faith and love. Because remember, love covers a multitude of sins. God bless you. That's my message for today. And uh, God is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and visit our website on www.christhealingcenter.co.za. God bless you.